Hello guys, welcome back to this week's episode of TGIF. Thank God it's forever where Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first. This here is Chaplain Andrew to teach you the unchangeable and unfailable Word of God. Listen for this theme song and you'll know. It's me, hello podcast land. Hello guys. Hey, we're here. Sorry, I'm a little tardy again. I I always say this, but Jesus was always late to everything. There's not one point in that Bible where Jesus was on time for anything. He was always late. But guess what? Even though he was always late, it was the perfect timing anyway. So technically, he was always on time, even though man thought he was late. That's the key. Again, Lazarus' death. Jesus was on time, even though... Mary said he's been dead for four days. He begins to stink. She specifically said in the Bible, he begins to stinketh. Excuse me, but but Jesus, again, was on time, period. So without further ado, I'm going to get the announcements situated. I'm just going to Say them real quick. There's not much to say for announcements today. Um, uh, join us for today's episode or every Monday's episode where we will preach a word or we'll read through a certain book. Look forward, though. I'm excited to this. Look forward to next, uh, the next uh, March or the next read-through in the Bible. We are going to be doing a march through the Proverbs with my uh, guest, with, with my special guest on the show, Dr. Tom Ray. He gave me permission to use his videos that he puts on to, uh, to uh, Facebook. So all I got to do is when he's done, I just download from the Facebook. I then cut the video. In, in, I just cut the video at, towards the end of the actual message itself. And then after I'm done with that, I just take that and put it into my speaker and I go live and I do my normal routine. And then as I go to do today's episode of March through the uh, Proverbs, I just click play and listen to them. So I will not listen to any of them until we listen to them together. Because guess what? It's going to be phenomenal. And I want to learn along with you. See, that's the point. I love, love, love Dr. Tom. Just like I love Dr. Scott, and I loved when uh, Pastor John was the host of the Wednesday night service as well. And I didn't, well, the Bible study, yeah, I listened to the Bible study because I was in the Bible study recording it. But when Pastor, when Dr. Scott was doing it, I didn't listen to any of it until you listened to it too because I wanted to learn along with you. That was the whole point. I wanted to learn with you what he had to say. It's going to be the same way with Dr. Tom. I don't want to hear none of what Dr. Tom has to say until you guys hear it with me. So that way we can learn together. And ask for, feel free to ask any questions. And then any questions that I have or that you have, I relay them to Dr. Tom. And then from there on, Dr. Tom will answer your questions via my text. And then whenever you get, whenever I get the opportunity to, I'll repost you the answer to what Dr. Tom had to say. But... Look forward to it. That's going to be exciting. It's going to be a march through the Proverbs. And we are going to have a blast. I'm telling you what. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun to march through the Proverbs. So we're going to be in God's army and march through the Proverbs. So look forward to that. Also look forward to this week's episode of Worship Saturdays where we do nothing but praise, prayer, and worship. That's it. That's all we do. Hey, welcome back, guys. We're live, we're live, we're live. Let me turn my mic up a little bit on the... There we go. Let me turn up my volume here. Is that my volume right? I got a volume in here somewhere that I need to turn up a tiny bit because... There we go. It's a little bit louder now. I have a bad hard hearing problem. And... Audio... And for some reason, I can't seem to hear always good. So I'm going to leave my leave my microphone cranked up a little bit because I need to be able to hear what I'm hearing properly so I can hear what you guys hear so I can edit things, fix things, 
you know, the normal, just to make sure that we sound good. Because we need to have a good sounding podcast. We don't want something that sounds terrible. Like I used to be on my cell phone with my two $5 piece microphones. If any of you do not know, I started with two $5 piece microphones or two microphones. It was $10, two of them for $5 a piece, two mics, my cell phone, and then my uh, my cell phone, of course, and then Spreaker, which was um, back then was 45 minutes for free. So Spreaker, 45 minutes for free, and then a little tiny line mixer. And I still got the line mixer to this day. It's actually a headphone jack. It's a headphone splitter that splits into four sections, but you can turn the volumes up volumes up on each of the headphones. It's a headphone amplifier or something. But I used it backwards to plug mics and other things into it so I can uh, use that for my show. And then I eventually used it for volume control on my speakers that I had because I used to have... All my stuff in my podcast used to be out of a briefcase. I used to carry a briefcase around with me with all my stuff in there. And then I would open it up. I would take all my little stuff hanging on my briefcase and do a show that way. It was phenomenal. I even had a working telephone in that thing. It was phenomenal. But I now have my own podcasting room, which I do everything through my room. And yes, I will have a working telephone in my room real soon so you guys can... I got the number still, 302-448-8443. Again, that's one, 302-448-TGIF, where Jesus does most definitely come first. I got the number. You can still call me, leave, me, leave voicemails, text, or whatever you want to do. Let me know what's going on in your lives. Let me know what kind of questions you have and other stuff like that. So, without further ado, hey, without further ado, let's get into our first song of the show. And I picked a good one. I wanted to go old school. And yes, a lot of the stuff that I have is old school, like Dr. Prophet and Larry O'Rell's old school. And I got a lot of his old school songs that I used to listen to. The Light Warriors got some classic old school stuff. So does Dudley. Dudley's Born Again. That's classic and old school. That was like 1980s when he was lead singer for, when he was Jimmy Swaggart's lead singer in the 80s. That was classic and old school. Uh, the K. Daniel Spirit and Truth Worship Band, the whole album I play is old school. So there's so much old school stuff that I can play. I chose this old school by Dr. Tom Ray. It is entitled In Your Name by none other than Dr. Tom Ray. Enjoy In Your Name. I must have an issue. There you go. Enjoy In Your Name. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah.
And I always say it this way, guys. If he did, praise God. If he did not, praise God. Anyways, he should have sang Jesus. Because something about that name. Because if you listen to the song, he goes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Ring. And it starts going into something about that name. Jesus. Jesus. Something about that name. Master, Savior. Something about that name. Kings and kingdom shall all pass away. But there's something. Something about that name. So if he's saying it, then great. If he didn't, then still great. Still an old school classic. I told you, a classic by Dr. Tom Ray. And that, once again, guys, was In Your Name. Give me two seconds. I'm going to take me a quick drink, and I'll be right back. I like my mixer. I can just mute the mixer right then and there. I don't have to do anything on the actual, excuse me, speaker itself. But there you go, guys. We're going to get into our reading today on the book of John. And it is entitled Book of John, Chapter 12. And this is going to be a good read. I'm telling you what, this is going to be a good read today. John, book of John, Chapter 12. So, we are at Chapter 12, and... Let me see if this is going to be a part one and a part two. Oh, yeah. I think this is going to be a part two. No, wait. There's, there's John 12. Where is 13? Well, this actually will be a small read, so it's not going to be a part one and a part two, so never mind that idea. So, John chapter 12, and those of you who are tuning in today, thank you so much. Let's pray. We, I, I keep forgetting to pray. Lord, help us to retain what you want to say to us today, Lord. Open up our spiritual ears and our spiritual eyes so we may see and hear what you have to say, God, in the spirit, not what... Chaplain Andrew has to say what well, you have to say in the spirit because Lord whatever comes out of my mouth is from you I will never proclaim anything on this show that does not come out of the mouth of God because it says in your word Lord man does not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God so teach us what you want to teach us and make sure that whatever is in here Lord that you want us to know you let us you let us hear what you have to say. And Lord, forgive us of all of our unrighteousness. Forgive us of all of our sins, as Bill Gates once sang about. If you find anything that shouldn't be taken out and strengthened, we want to live right, want to be faithful, want to be holy. We thank you, we praise you, we honor you. It's all in the matchless name of Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Yep, because this is my Gaither Bible, Homecoming Bible. And it's got a it's got a bunch of different things in here like songs that he wrote. So John chapter twelve. Let me take off my glasses so I can see this better. I see better close up with my glasses off. John chapter twelve, verse one. Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, who had been dead, when he had raised, raised him from the dead. Then they made him supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Then Mary took and took a pound of very costly oil 
Now, this is a costly fragrance, they say in the in the old King James Version. Very, very, it, this would be compared to, in this day and age, what she's about to do would be compared to Chanel number no. 5. Okay? It would be compared to Chanel number no. 5. It would be compared to Coach. It would be compared to uh, Cadillacs, Perfumes. It would be compared to, uh, what's the other one? I can't remember the name now. Like, it's more expensive than Tommy Hilfiger, but it's, we're just going to do Chanel number no. 5. It is compared to Chanel number no. 5 is what she's about to do with this. So, uh, Supper and Mary, and Mary served, but Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil and very costly oil of Hold on for a minute. I can't read this. Subcanard. Anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. So, let's begin. She did what? She cracked open a bottle of fragrant oil, fragrant perfume. Poured it all over Jesus' feet and then wiped her hair with his feet. Okay? So, let me... But it wasn't just any perfume. It, it, it was of very... She poured a pound of very costly perfume or oil. Very costly. Again, that's compared to Chanel number no. 5 in this day and age. So, it was very expensive. And what did she do? She poured it, anointed Jesus' feet, poured it on his feet, and then what? Wiped her hair, with, wiped his feet with her hair, right? Oh, so filled the fragrance. What was she doing? Number one, she was worshiping God. She was wor worshiping Jesus. But, let's continue reading. Number one, she was worshiping Jesus. So let's continue reading. But one of his disciples... Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, Why is this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? Then he said, Not this, he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box and he used, used, used to take what was put in it. But Jesus said, let her alone. She has kept this, she has kept this for the day of my burial. For the poor you have with you always, but me you do not have always. So Jesus is trying to tell them something. What is Jesus trying to say here? Look, leave her alone. She's saving this for the day of my burial. Because the day of Passover is just before Jesus gets whipped and crucified, right? He says, look, leave her alone. She saves this for my burial. And what else did he say? He says, the poor you'll have with you forever. Let me make sure I got that right. Uh, for the day of my burial, for the poor you'll have with you always. Not forever, always. There's a key difference there. Forever means they'll never leave. And yes, the poor will never all will not will not forever be with you. They'll always be with you on earth, but not forever with you. So she said this for my betrayal, the poor you have with you always, but me you do not have always. So what is he trying to say? He's trying to say, Look, I'm about to be crucified, I'm about to die on a cross to save the sins of the world. I'm about to be beaten. I'm about to be bruised. I'm about to be broken. By my stripes, you're about to be healed. Everything that is prophesied about me and about my death, burial, and resurrection is going to happen soon. This poor over here, the poor community, you're all, they're always going to be there. Mr. Jimmy John that sits in the corner at the gate, he's going to be there every single day until he dies. And goes to be with me. 
the blind man at the gate, blind Bartimaeus, excuse me, he's always going to be there until he goes to die and goes, come with me. The guy at the well, yeah, he's always going to be there. The fool Salam, he's always going to be there. Until he dies, goes and goes with me. It's just a poor example, but you get my point. The poor community is always going to be there. How many times have you walked out your front door and saw the same set of homeless people until they die? Always, right? So you, he says, you'll always have those with you, but you're not going to always have me. He's basically getting them ready for his death, burial, and resurrection. Basically, saying, I'm going to die soon. And all you care about is that over there. This you'll have, but me you won't. So he's getting them prepared for his death, burial, and resurrection. The plot to kill Lazarus. So, again, she kept it for, for the day of my burial. For the poor you have with you always. But me, you do not have always. Let me make sure I got that right. Yes. But Jesus said, let her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. For the poor you'll have with you always. But me, you do not have always. So Jesus, is again, like I said, was uh, letting him know that he's about to be He's about to die and be crucified, be whipped and all that stuff. He's getting them prepared for his death. He's preparing them. The plot to kill Lazarus. Now a great many of the Jews knew that he was there. And they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might also see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests plotted but the chief you can hear me flipping pages that's good that means I'm getting somewhere but the chief priest plotted to put Lazarus to death also because on account of him many of the Jews went away and believed in Jesus so they're plotting to kill Lazarus okay they're luck they're saying luck what happened with you and Jesus there? You dying. Jesus raising you from the dead. We're going to kill you. Why? Because people are believing in Jesus. Okay? They believe in that Jesus is God. And see, that's the, that's the thing, though. Everyone thought that Jesus was blasphemous. They said, Jesus is blasphemous. He's this. He's that. Because why? He claimed to be God on foot. He said, in the word, he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And we read that in the previous books of John. See, Jesus was not, here God is, jumps into Jesus' body and comes down on earth. Jesus was the Father. The Father was the Son. See, the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. See, Jesus said, me and the Father are one. If you see me, you've seen the Father. Now, it doesn't mean that God the Father jumped into Jesus' body. Here he is, poof, he's on earth. No, the reason why Jesus said, if you see me, you've seen the Father, because he showed the characteristics of the Father. For instance, if you just say, um, okay, just say for example, me and my wife have a baby, right? It grows up. Eventually, that child that we just bore that's now grown up, being 18, 19, and 20, will start doing what? The things that we do. You ever heard the old saying, you know, like father, like son? Or uh, a kid learn, learn their bad behavior by their parents? That's the way it works. When a child grows up, they see that their dad beats their mom. They see that their dad drinks a lot. So what do they do? They go into that area of drugs and alcohol and beating their women. Not all of them, but you get what I'm trying to say. It's just like Jesus. Jesus learned his good behavior from his father. He showed the characteristics of the father because his his mom and his dad grew he grew up learning from the Talmud, I think it's called, the Jewish scroll, and reading what his father in heaven had to say to his people. 
And so what? He, like father, like son. He showed the characteristics of his father. And so when he showed the characteristics of the father, that in turn basically means if you see me, you've seen the father. Because what I do, the father does also, basically. So when Jesus fed the 5,000, he just didn't feed the 5,000. He fed the 5,000 because God had him to do so. So God, show, he showed the characteristics of his father by doing good deeds, by feeding people, by clothing people, by doing all this stuff. But see, he just didn't do it like some people do. Some people, there's a lot of great people going straight to hell. A lot of nice people going straight to hell because they're doing it out of, look what I'm doing. Look at look how many people I'm saving or feeding or clothing. See, Jesus didn't do it because of that. He did it because what? The Father was glorified. Everything Jesus did, when I say he showed the characteristics of the Father, everything that Jesus did was to glorify God. If you think of it, listen again. What does the Bible say when Lazarus was dead and Jesus came to raise him from the dead before he got there? When he got there, I should say. Mary said, look, Martha said, look, if you would have been here, he would have wouldn't have been dead. And he prayed, and he says, Lord, he says, I pray not only that you raise Lazarus from the dead, basically, but that everyone around me may believe in me or believe in you. So what did he do? He used that moment of being late for four days and Lazarus, Lazarus stinking, probably up there eating ch fried chicken and mashed potatoes with St. Peter. So I got to go back, guys. Save me a leg. You get what I'm saying? So he did that to glorify God by showing what God can do. That wasn't just, yes, he was a spirit, and he, poof, he rose Lazarus from the dead. He would not have had that, that power unless his father gave it to him. That's why his father gave him two, two sides, the spiritual side and the physical side, the spiritual and the human side, so he can feel what we feel but still be able to do stuff that his father would do. So he showed the characteristics of the father, and everything he did was to glorify God. Just like I said, when he, when he prayed before Lazarus rose from the dead, he says, let them believe in you. So he showed the characteristics of the father in every single manner, but they wanted to kill Lazarus because of what Jesus did through him. Because why? Because they're believing in Jesus. They, they wanted to put Lazarus to death also because on account of how many of the Jews went away and believed in Jesus. So they, they also thought that Jesus at this point was, was casting devils out with devils. Because they at one point in the word it says that he cast out devils with Satan, pretty much is what they say. That he was doing evil. Let me let me look this up on my phone so I can get a good uh, good connotation of what I'm trying to say. Because I know what I'm trying to say. It's just it's hard to get the exact notate the exact wording. Um Let me think and I have to let me think about this again. Pharisees saying Jesus was casting out demons with demons. That should be an easy one. Here we go. I think this is it. When the Pharisees heard it, they said, it is only by Beelzebub that the prince of demons, that this man cast out demons. Talking about Jesus. Let me do the, um, there's the ESV. So they were saying that Jesus was casting out demons with demons. Again, he gets his power from Satan, the prince of demons. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said this. So this is the KJV version. 
so. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doeth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub. So in the ESV, but when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This is only by Beelzebub, the prince of demons, that this man cast out demons. So they thought Jesus was casting out demons with demons. They also thought that he was very blasphemous on the way he was doing things. And like, because they used to always say, you're not supposed to work on Sunday. Sunday's supposed to be relaxing, right? You're supposed to relax, you're supposed to do nothing. What did you, they dropped a man with a withered hand down, right? From right in the middle of Jesus preaching, dropped a man with a withered hand. What does he do? He heals the hand. And what did, what did the Pharisees say? The, the vipers say, well, is it not lawful to work on Sunday? And I love Jesus' reaction. He says, if your ox was not stuck in a ditch, would you not pull it out? If your ox was stuck in a ditch, would you not get it out of there? Of course they would. But hey, wait, that's working. You're not supposed to work on Sunday. You're supposed to relax. The point is that they wanted to stone, kill Lazarus too because they thought that Jesus was pure evil. And he wasn't. So they wanted to put Lazarus to death also because on account of him many of the Jews went away and believed in Jesus. Because of what happened with Jesus and Lazarus, Lazarus they wanted to stone him because everyone was starting to, the Jews were starting to believe in Jesus. Okay. The triumph entry. The next day, a great multitude that had came to the feast, when they heard, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees, and went out to meet him, and carried out. So, then Jesus. Was, okay. Um. The next day, a great multitude that had came. To the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, King of Israel. Now, this right here is where we get Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday, this is the Sunday, well, technically the Saturday. Because in their day, it was Saturday, it was the Sabbath. This is the, the Sunday just before Jesus is dead, died on a cross, and then rose again. Died, was buried, and rose, right? So, they cried out. They cried out, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Then Jesus when he had found a young donkey, sat on it as it is written. Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him and that they had done these things to him. Therefore the people who were with him when he when he called Lazarus out of the out of the tomb and raised him from the dead bore witness. For this reason the people also met him because they heard that he had done this sign. The Pharisees therefore said among themselves excuse me you see that you are accomplishing nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. I mean, they went after Jesus. Now, why did Jesus ride into town on a donkey? Hold on for a minute, guys. Why did Jesus come into town and ride into town on a donkey? By the way, um... One of my bishops, my bishop spiritual father, uh, wrote a, an entire message about just that donkey. It was classic. I, I got to find it and try to see if I can use it. But why did he ride into town on a donkey? 
Yes, they're yelling, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They're glorifying him, they're praising him, but why did he do that? He didn't do the just for the, the praise, the honor, the glorifying, and all that stuff. Yes, that was all part of it, but the reason why is why? Because he showed his deity. He showed who he was in God because they heard he did miraculous signs. And he showed his deity by doing so. He didn't he didn't ride on some fancy horse, which he's going to later on. He's going to come on a white horse. He didn't ride on some fancy horse. He didn't ride with some fancy, uh, what did they have back then? A horse and trailer thing. He didn't ride one of those fancy things. He didn't, he didn't have a lot of money. He didn't have much. But he rode into town on a donkey that he found. He found a donkey and rode into town on his saddle and rode into town. Now, donkeys are slow and... They're they're just slow and their brains are not very big. They don't got really a smart brain. But he rode into town on that donkey to show his deity, who he was in God. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him and that they had done these things to him. Therefore, the people who were with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised from the dead were witnesses. And for this reason, the people also met him because they heard that he had done this sign. The Pharisees therefore said among themselves, You see that you are accomplishing, accomplishing nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. So the Pharisees are saying, look, you're not doing anything because the world's going after Jesus. You're accomplishing nothing. And the world's going after Jesus. And why? Because he's showing who he was in God. And when and remember, he prayed, let this, he says, Father, I pray that you, with through this, let them believe in you. Okay? The faithful grain of wheat now there were certain Greeks among those who came up to worship at the feast. Then they came to Philip, who was from Beth. I can't pronounce the name. Beth Saida, B E T H S A I D A of Galilee, and asked him, saying, "Sir." We wish to see Jesus. Philip came and told Andrew, and in turn, Andrew and Philip told Jesus. But Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man shall be glorified. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone saves, serves me, let him follow me, and where I am there may work. And where I am there, my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, if it be also if anyone serves me, him my father will honor. So what is, what is he saying here? He's saying, look, whatever you do, if you love your life here on earth and you strive for all the fame, the fortune, the this, the that, the blah, 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 you love it here, you get nothing when you get to get to glory. You're not even going to make it to glory. But if you hate your life here, and basically not really hate your life, but if you, if, if, okay, he who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life, yes, hates his life, in this world will keep it for eternal life. So, the basic purpose of this is that he who is first on earth is last in heaven. 
He who is last in heaven, last on earth, is first in heaven. So if you love your, if you are conformed to this world and love your life, you're going to lose it when you get there. You won't even make it in. But if you hate your life here, and the whole point of by hating your life is not that you want to die or nothing, but hating your life is hating the sin that's in your life, hating all the garbage that you did or do. You know, those are the things that he's saying if you hate. So if you hate your life here on this earth and the way that it's going, you'll gain it in heaven forever. You'll have it for eternal life. Jesus predicts his death on the cross. Now my, now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this, but for this purpose, I come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified and it will glorify it. And then a voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Therefore, the people who stood by and heard it say that it had thundered, others say an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice did not come because of me, but for your sake. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. And if, and I will be cast out, wait, and the, and the ruler of this world will be cast out. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. This he said, signifying by what, Death, he would die. So right now, the, he's talking about his death, his burial, and his resurrection. He's preparing these people now that have just glorified him, just honored him, threw palm branches down, and was he was showing his deity. Now he's telling these same people, "Look, I'm about to die, be buried, and rise again, and and raise rise again." The people answered him, "We have heard from the law." that the Christ remains forever. And how can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Then Jesus said to them, see, they're not believing at this point. He says, he, they, they basically said that we heard from the law that Christ remains, right, forever. That Christ lives forever. And how can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? So they're saying, why are you saying that God, that Christ must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? Then Jesus said to them, see, they weren't believing. Jesus said to them, said to, Jesus said to them, a little while longer, the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going while you have the light. Believe in the light that you may become sons of light. These things Jesus spoke and departed and was hidden from them. So Jesus again is telling them, look, I'm about to die. You need to be with me. You need to glorify me. You, well, you need to believe in me. You need to, you know, things like that. I am the light of the world. Jesus was the light of the world. He was going to die on that cross. He's letting them know that I'm about to die for the sins of the world. You need to walk with me while you can. Because before, sooner or later, you're not going to be able to. Let's continue. Um, okay. Uh, so, so that you may become sons of light. These things Jesus spoke and departed and was hidden from them. Who has believed our report? But although 
He had done so many signs before them. And here we go. They did not believe in him. That the world of I the word of Isaiah, the prophet, might be lifted, might be fulfilled, which he spoke. Lord, who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore, they could not believe because Isaiah said again. Because Isaiah said again. I left up a couple pages. Okay, let me, let me find where I'm at again. Because Isaiah said again, Hold on. This is a little confusing to me because this is homecoming, but we got extra added stuff into it, like songs and stuff. So, therefore, they could not believe because because Isaiah said again. He has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, lest they should see with their eyes, least, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. These things Isaiah said when he saw his glory and spoke of him. Walk in the light. Nevertheless, even among the rulers, many believed in him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him. Lest they should be part of the synagogue. For they loved the praise of man more than the praise of God. Then Jesus cried out and said, He who believes in me believes not in me, but in him who sent me. Again, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Again, he does everything. Everything he's been doing so far has been to glorify what God. And it says once again, it says, He who believes in me believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And he said, And he who sees me sees him who sent me. Again, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I have come as a light into the world that whoever believes in me shall not abide in darkness. And if anyone hears my words and does not believe, I do not, I do not judge him for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. Again, what does it say in John 3, not 16, 3, 17? He did not come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Again, he says this right here. He says, he says, he um, should not abide in darkness. And if anyone hears my words and does not believe, I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. He who rejects me does not receive my words as that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken on my own authority, 
but the Father who sent me gave me a command what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his command is everlasting life. Therefore, whoever I speak, therefore, whatever I speak, just as the Father has told me to speak. So, what are he saying here? He's saying, look. Okay, let me, let me. He's basically again saying, if you see me, you've seen the Father. And whatever I speak is what the Father speaks. And he says, he who rejects me does not receive my words, has that which judges him. So what is he saying? He's saying that, hey, look, I'm trying to tell you the truth. I'm trying to give you what you need to know and how to be saved. I'm trying to show you something that you need. And if you don't listen to me, at the end of time, when you finally go to be with God, be with my Father, the one who sent me, you're not going to make it. And you're going to be judged by every letter of the law. I tell this to people all the time. Yes, the Ten Commandments are wonderful. You should follow them. Now, the Ten Commandments were not, did, um, were not, um, uh, did, Lord, forgive me. I'm trying to think of the word. He didn't do away with this one looking for. He didn't do away with the Ten Commandments. He fulfilled them. As he knew, God knew that us fallible people, infallible people, could not follow the, 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 the sorry guys, follow the Ten Commandments to a T. He knew that we were infallible people and were going to miss the mark royally. And that's why he sent Jesus to die on the cross so that he could fulfill the Ten Commandments for us. He knew that. But, are we going to die the instant we, you know, kill somebody? The instant we commit adultery? The instant, no. Look how many times I, back in the day, would look at pornography. Am I dead yet? No. Was I Was I going to die? I mean, you never promised tomorrow, but God knew Everything in my life was going to happen. So guess what? I didn't die right then and there. Back in the Old Testament, if you were to do something like that, and the Old Testament was still around here today, you'd been dead instantly. You took up the ghost and died. But just because you're not going to die instantly from breaking one of the commandments, should you follow them? Absolutely. Why? Because you're going to be judged by every letter of that law once you get to heaven. You're going, to, you're going to be judged by... Satan's going to come by. He killed. He stealed. He murdered. He committed adultery. He looked at a woman here. He thought about this. He that. He this. He's going to take and take every one of those Ten Commandments and say you did every single one of them. And let me tell you something. If you break one commandment, you broke them all. Why? Because they all fit. They all fit together like a puzzle. They all go together. So if you broke one, you broke them all. But... He's going to, he's going to, you did every single one of these right here and there. And you're going to be judged by every letter of that law. But what he's saying is if you believe in Jesus, believe in the light of the world, once the Father sees all that and Satan says what you did, and he goes, well, you did this, you did that, you did that. What do you have to say for yourself? That's when Jesus said, look, I died for that. I died for that. I died for that. Oh, and I died for that over there. And by the time he gets done, he's going to look at the book and wait, wait. All your sins are forgiven. The blood of Christ worked. So see, yes, you'll be judged by every letter of that law, but if you believe in Christ as Jesus is saying, he who believes in me in John three sixteen says, what? He who believes in me will not perish by everlasting life. Again, he says it right in this, right in chapter 12. He says, if you believe in me, you'll be with me forever. He's basically saying, if you believe in me, then you'll be with me. So, hey, I thought that was a very good word. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. We're going to get into some more praise and worship. Let's praise God. Let's do some praise and worship.
Because you know what? After a good word, I love me some praise and worship. So let's do this. Let's get into our next song. Our next song is not in your name. We always played that song. So let me get this going over here. Excuse me for a second. Let's get into our next song. Our next song is Children of the Lord Shine On by my friend and guest on the show, The Light Warrior. Enjoy Children of the Lord Shine On.
There you go, guys. That was Children of the Lord Shine On by my friend and guest on the show, The Light Warrior. Got three more songs to play. We're going to play two. We're going to pray. Then we're going to play the last one ending with that. Our next song on the list, we haven't played this one in a while, is Calvary Medley by none other than Dr. Prophet Larry O'Rell, my friend for over 16 years. Enjoy Calvary Medley. for me to die at Calvary. Oh, the love that true salvation spreads. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span.
There you go, guys. That was Because of Calvary by none other than my guest. Well, not my guest yet, but my friend for over 16 years, Dr. Prophet Larry O'Rell. We're going to play our next one, then we're going to pray, and we'll play our last one. Our next song on the list is It's Time by one of the greatest bands you have here on the show, the K. Daniel Spirit and Truth Worship Band. Enjoy It's Time. Again, by the K. Daniel Spirit and Truth Worship Band. Enjoy It's Time. <laughs>
There you go, guys. That was It Time by none other than the K. Daniel Stewart and Truth Worship Band. Let's pray. Lord, help me come back before you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are God and God alone, that you are having your way in this ministry. We thank you, Lord, that I thank you, Lord, that you are blessing everyone that sent on my voice, giving them their heart's desire as long as it's not be what selfish. And Lord, I ask you to heal them from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet from cancer, diabetes, multiple dystrophy, multiple sclerosis. Heal. <coughs> Excuse me. Heal my mom's atrophy and whatever's going on with her. Heal my sister's heart and her diabetes or so that they're not bad no more. Heal my sister-in-law's heart and whatever else is going on with her that it's not bad no more, Lord. And Lord, heal people from diseases that contracted themselves through sin. Yes, HIV, AIDS, syphilis, gonorrhea, herpes, why? When you heal them, show your mercy, your power, and your grace, and that you are real. I'm reminded of a scripture that says you came through the door. doesn't say you open the door. It says you pass right straight through the door because you're all spirit at that moment. You said, Thomas, look at my hands. Thrust your finger in my side and see that I'm God. What did Thomas do? He got on his knees and said, truly, you are the Son of God. What did you say? Blessed are those who have seen and believed. It doesn't stop there. So blessed to those who have not seen it still believe. So show them now, Lord, so they come back needing absolutely anything. They won't have to say it to see it to believe. Because they'll say, if you did it then, you'll do it again. Your word again, Lord, says you're the same God yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you. We praise you. We honor you. It's all in the matchless name of Christ that we pray. Amen. Ba-doom, boom, boom. Amen. Doom, doom, doom. Amen. 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 Our last song on list is not track one by an unknown artist. It is Born Again by none other than Pastor Evangelist Dudley Smith. And again, this is perfect for our episode today. Enjoy Born Again. Let me tell you about the comforter.
the power that's coming down from on high. I wonder if you can feel the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 There ain't no doubt in my mind. I say there ain't no doubt in my mind. There are a lot of things I don't know. But one thing I do know, I know that, I know that. that 
There you go, guys. That was Born Again by none other than Pastor Evangelist Dudley Smith, my guest on the show. Well, the guys, that does conclude our show for today. As always, two things to remind you of. We're getting that app situated. I got, I got it all ready to go. I just got to talk to the Play Store. And as always, ask your Alexa device. Say, Alexa, open Podcast Portal. And she's going to say welcome to or welcome back to Podcast Portal. We're going to listen to the very show straight from your Alexa devices. We also got that skill. Reveal Alexa devices as well. Again, say Alexa. Mm. Open Podcast Portal. And you say welcome to, welcome back to Podcast Portal. And that does, guys, conclude our show for today. As always, this is TGIF reminding you to, one, trust in the Lord in all your ways, two, lean not your own understandings, and three, in all your ways acknowledge him, he shall direct your path. Thank you, and good night. <laughs>